And this is the second episode on blood vessels. If you want to let her learn more about the introduction, then please listen to the first episode. So now I'm going to be talking about capillaries. Arteries branch into much smaller vessels called capillaries. Capillaries have thin walls and pass very close to the body cells. This means that there can be an efficient exchange of food and oxygen. In capillaries, food and oxygen moves out of the blood and into the cells. And waste products. In capillaries, waste products such as carbon dioxide move out of the cells and into the blood. So at, in the beginning of the last episode, we learned the three types of blood vessels. These are capillaries, arteries, and veins. And their three roles are first of all, arteries transport blood away from the heart to the organs. Then arteries branch into these much smaller vessels. In these blood vessels, food, oxygen, and waste products are exchanged between the blood and the body cells. And then the capillaries join back up and transport blood from the organs back to the heart via the veins. So let's just consider what would happen if capillaries had thicker walls and lower surface areas. This would mean that food, oxygen, and waste products would diffuse more slowly in the blood. So now the third blood vessel I'm gonna be talking about are veins. Veins form when capillaries join up after passing through the, blood, the body. <laughs> They transport deoxygenated blood, which means blood with no oxygen, apart from the pulmonary vein, from the organs back to the heart. They are different to arteries because, first of all, they have thinner walls. The walls are thinner than those found in the arteries, as the blood is at a lower pressure. Secondly, they have a wider cross-section. Low pressure hinders the blood flow, and this means that veins have a wider cross-section through which blood can flow to counteract this. And finally, they have valves. Veins have valves to prevent the backflow of blood. So pulmonary means anything related to the lungs. The pulmonary vein transports oxygenated blood from the lungs to the heart. So this is the only vein that transports oxygenated blood. And the pulmonary artery transports deoxygenated blood from the heart to the lungs. This is the only artery that transports deoxygenated blood. So let's just recap on the differences between arteries and veins. We know that artery walls have thick layers of muscle, making them strong and able to cope with the high pressure at which blood is pumped out by the heart. In veins, the pressure is lower, which hinders blood flow. Therefore, veins have a thinner wall and wider cross section than arteries. Veins also have valves to prevent the backflow of blood. So capillaries, which basically join arteries to veins and are what, where waste products and oxygen and so on are transported between the cells and the body. The kind of waste products that these might be include carbon dioxide, whereas oxygen is supplied to the cells. So let's just look back again on these vein, differences between veins and arteries. We know that veins have a wider cross section to allow more blood flow. We know that veins have a low blood pressure they have valves, and they also carry deoxygenated blood, with exception the pulmonary vein. So why do veins have valves? This is because they're designed to prevent the backflow of blood, to ensure it does return to the heart. So that's everything I'm going to be talking about, and this brings the topic of blood vessels to a close. Thanks very much for listening.